Hey out there, Sonic fans. What would you get if you crossed Vandal Savage with the Kingpin and made him into an anthropomorphic woolly mammoth? You'd get the Mammoth Mogul, one of the more complex and popular villains from the Archie Sonic comic. Uh, this guy has a really intricate backstory, which if I got into, this would make this video half an hour long. So let's just give you the quick Cliff Notes version and then get into making the custom toy itself. Uh, to say that Mammoth Mogul is old is um, and quite the understatement. Uh, way back, uh, possibly during the Days of Fury or very shortly after it, uh, Mammoth Mogul encountered a Chaos Emerald which got embedded into his chest and made him immortal. Uh, he founded the Ancient Order of Ixus Wizards who tried to take over the world but was defeated by the Echidnas in the Forgotten War. Uh, he laid low for quite a while until Dr. Robotnik's uh, coup, where he tried to take over by uh, manipulating the Freedom Fighters and the Chaotix. Um, he, uh, during a, a manipulation of getting them to fight each other, he was able to get away with the Sword of Acorns, a magical artifact that allowed him to channel the Chaos Energy out of Enerjack and turn himself into a Master Mogul. A super powerful being powered by the power of 12 Chaos Emeralds. Um, after fighting with uh, Supersonic, Turbo Tails, and Hyper Knuckles, uh, he tried to absorb the power of the Floating Islands to Chaos Emeralds, which caused a major reaction that turned him into uh, uh, the Master Emerald, which he was trapped inside of. Um, he was released from the Master Emerald after, during the Sonic Adventure arc when it was shattered, and uh, he tried. He managed to steal his power back um, with a confrontation with uh, uh, Knuckles back when he was Chaos Knuckles. Yeah, this uh, this kind of crosses between uh, two or three different comic book series and like over fifty or sixty issues. So this is a really long backstory. Uh, but again, this is only the cliff notes. So um, yeah, after. Uh, he took his power back. He disappeared for a while, only to be revealed that he was actually destroying the multiverse. <laughs> um, this resulted in Tails having to merge with all the alternate Tailses from every other universe to become Titan Tails, who fought him off and trapped him inside of his own, um, you know, his own little Chaos Emerald, uh, where he remained for a while until he managed until he managed to kill the ancient Walkers and escape. Uh, taking the Sword of Acorns back and, um, again, trying to, you know, take everything over. Uh, but the Sword of Acorns was destroyed by, um, by that horse paladin guy whose name escapes me for the moment. And, um, and he was returned back to his original power, you know, his, uh, Ixus abilities. Um, so... He was captured by Dr. Robotnik and stuck in the egg grapes for a while. Uh, they managed to escape that, where Nicole just grabbed him and stuck him into a regular prison, where um, he, he remained for a while until he blackmailed Sonic into freeing him by, um, by using post-hypnotic suggestions he had planted in certain friends uh, to man and would have manipulated them into killing themselves. Uh, he would have made Mina run into the middle of the ocean and drown herself, Tails fly into the upper atmosphere until he passed out, and Mighty would simply walk into Megalopolis and until Robotnik's robots blasted the crap out of him. Uh, Sonic relented and helped him escape the prison and returned him to a Chaos Emerald, and, um, and Mammoth Mogul uh, made a promise from that point to uh, not trouble Sonic directly anymore, but to simply outlive him. You know, because he knows that he is immortal, Sonic's not. He's simply going to wait until Sonic dies, and then go back to his plans to take over the world. Extremely petty and very patient, isn't he? Well, how did that work out for him? We can never really be sure of all the exact details, but we do see that apparently his plans to take over the world never really bore fruition, as we see him a hundred years in the future acting as a sort of mentor to Silver. Um, he would give him advice and, and try to help him fix whatever problems in the past caused the post-apocalyptic future. Um, he is visibly older here, suggesting that somewhere along the way he loses his chaos powers again, although mammoths are pretty long-lived animals. Um, if they're anything like elephants, they prob 
they um elephants you know live to be over 70 years old in the wild so for an animal that's actually a pretty long time that's almost that's about the same length as a human lifespan and they don't have the benefits of our technology so yeah he's he's obviously long lived but he no long he's no longer immortal i wish that we didn't have to have a reboot because we get to find out what exactly happened to him with all that said, let's get to the actual commission here. Uh, this one is for Tekka Spike. Um, you may remember him as the guy who got the Sonic and Sally wedding cake topper. And he actually got a whole Freedom Fighter team for me earlier. He's actually a, ve a very loyal customer and um, a one that I would call my friend. Uh, he's even been over to my place a couple of times to personally pick his figures up, which has only happened with one other person. Alright, so let's... Uh, so let's start the theme song and get on track. <laughs> Mammoth Mogul, um, if you hadn't noticed from all those comic panels before, has a pretty unique physique for a Mobian. So I had to select a pretty unique toy to make him out of. I went with um, a Marvel Legends uh, Kingpin figure, uh, seen here with a Blaze the Cat figure to show scale. At first, I thought that this guy would be kind of too big and that I might have to do an elaborate surgery to shorten the figure's legs, but then I remember just how big Mammoth Mogul actually is. In fact, um, it probably come, stems from the fact that mammoths were one of the biggest land mammals to ever live. They were significantly larger than modern-day African elephants, the current largest mammal to exist, and um, are probably second only to the Indricotherium, which uh, the Indricotherium, I think is pronounced, is, is um, the unholy fusion of a giraffe with a rhinoceros, and uh, seen in the size comparison with a modern-day African elephant, was clearly horrifyingly huge. Um, one of the only mammals to actually rival the sauropod dinosaurs in terms of true size that actually lived on land, you know. Only whales are bigger than this thing. But I digress. Um, we are talking about making a toy here, not giving you a lesson on Ice Age mammals. Uh, the body actually didn't require too much modification in terms of sculpting. Um, on the little scarf thing on his uh, lapel, I put in Mammoth Mogul's Chaos Emerald. I believe that it actually is embedded in his chest, and he just cut a hole in the lapel to show it off. Um, along with turning the single-breasted suit that the figure is molded in to a double-breasted suit, and adding the pinky in middle... Um, he wears rings. Uh, on the right hand, he has a ring on his pinky and middle fingers, and on the left hand, he has uh, rings on his ring and pinky fingers. One was actually already there, so yay. A uh, quick pink job. Well, it wasn't so quick. I had to do quite a bit. It, it was relatively simple, though, as the entire suit is just white. Um, the buttons are black, the shirt, and the little handkerchief in the pocket, which I molded. The pocket is mine. Um, are all gray with, you know, green chaos emerald, gold rings, and the shoes stay black. So, yeah, it was a pretty simple pink job, although there was a lot of area there, so it did still take a while. Oh yeah, also the skin. I painted the hands and the neck brown to, um, not to turn him into the black version of the Kingpin, which was seen in the Daredevil movie and some other media, but, you know, to, um, you know, match the fur color. I know it doesn't look like much from here, but that's because this, uh, paint doesn't really photograph very dark. But let's talk about where the real modifications came in. The head. Here's Kingpin's head. I started off by cutting off his ears, that would afford a nice smooth surface which would be easier to sculpt on, and then came the three-tiered portion of molding on Mammoth Mogul's face. Step one was to flesh out the details of the face itself, you know, his eyes, his brow ridge, and his hair, both on the tops and sides of his head. Um, the, those two big things on his cheeks are the anchoring points for his tusks, which are uh, made out of epoxy sculpt, but with an aluminum core to help them support their weight. That way they wouldn't sag under their own weight as the epoxy sculpt was hardening. Once they were in place, I made the trunk. Um, 
The trunk also has an aluminum core, which helped it maintain its shape, and uh, is also made out of the epoxy sculpt because, you know, that's what I use these days. However, I couldn't make the ears out of the epoxy sculpt, although it would have been easy to make that big flat shape with the, with the epoxy sculpt just fine, I was afraid that if I did, there would be durability issues, because um, even though epoxy sculpt is pretty strong, it's still brittle, and when made so thin, I was afraid that it would snap or break, especially if I had to mail this, so I decided to use craft foam instead. I only had red on hand, but, uh, you know, it gets painted over. Uh, here they, here it is attached to the head, and here it is with a good paint job. Uh, the tusks, to look like ivory, are made a light tan. Uh, the insides of his ears are pink, because I've seen the insides of his ears colored pink, and it seemed just the way to go. And, um, you know, brown fur, green eyes. I like to think that his eyes weren't always green, but they turned green when the Chaos Emerald got embedded in his chest. You know, just, um... I don't know, it's just a thing I like to think. Uh, so let's reattach the head to the body and see what the completed Mammoth Mogul figure looks like. Here we go! That's Mammoth Mogul, alright. Um, pretty glorious. Um, I didn't want his chunk to look too limp on his face, uh, so that's why I sculpted in like a raised position. Um... And thankfully, he still has all the original articulation, including all the movement that the head originally had. Unfortunately, although the head is very free to move in many directions, he can't look down. And that's not because of what I did, that's just the way the chin is made. It's a shame because, you know, you think he would need to look down because he's taller than everybody. Oh well, uh, this has still been a great project to work on. I hope Tekka Spike likes it. As, um, as well as all of you. So this is Wake Angel 2001, and I am signing off.